but um, I, I think I can honestly say now with the, with the leadership we have in place now uh, under Rick Wagner and with Fritz Henderson as president, um, with uh, the whole creative side of General Motors having been re-legitimatized after maybe 20 years of running the business by the numbers and always playing it safe, I think the, the whole company has now learned the lesson that when you step out and do bold things, you win. And when you're cautious and let somebody else do the bold things, you lose. So uh, I think uh, I think that lesson is deeply embedded in the in the organization now, and it's it's not just advanced technology. It's everything we do. It's why the Chevy Malibu is such a hit, because we weren't content to do just another mid-sized car. We had the ambition of doing the best looking, best driving, uh, best quality, best interior, most silent, etc., etc. Set our goals high and try to beat everybody in the world. We did the same thing with the Cadillac CTS in its category. And everywhere we've done that, it's worked. So. I don't think there's any risk of the company slipping back into the bad old ways. And I think we've got enough, enough of the team now that has seen that it works when you try to be the best and you actually come out with the best, it works in the marketplace. I think if senior management ever tried to go back to the old ways, there would be armed insurrection. <laughs> say thank you to yourself and Lyle. The, the fact that GM's even willing to let me ask you a question directly is just a total testament to how serious you are about getting this program off the ground. Uh, it was widely reported in the beginning that Toyota took a loss on almost every single vehicle, I think some people said for the first two or three years. I'm wondering if GM is willing to take that direction in their, their thought process of pricing the vehicle or is this something that needs to be profitable from day one? That's, uh, again, a very good question. And it, it, your question explains why Toyota did the Prius and we did because uh, we basically had the technology in the company to come out with a hybrid at the same time as Toyota. Or maybe, I mean, if you look back through the old uh, Parade of Progress reports back in, in 1968, we had a Parade of Progress where we, had, we, we demonstrated a fully electric vehicle and we demonstrated a gas electric hybrid. So, I mean, GM obviously masters the technology and has always mastered it, but here is the problem. Uh, at Toyota, the, the, the CEO's name is on the building. It's a lot like the Ford Motor Company. And when the Toyota family decides, hmm, I think it's time for us to do a hybrid, and somebody says, well, uh, we're gonna, you know, kind of lose a little money on that, sir. And he says, well, hey, that's okay. We need it for the image of the company. That is easier to do in a company where the CEO's name is on the building, whereas we are beholden to the shareholders. So we looked at the, the equation for doing a hybrid, and we said, well, it's going to cost about $400 million. Uh, we'll have to sell them below cost, and it's going to cost us $300 million a year or so. And, you know, Rick Wagner, logically ask the question, which one of us volunteers to take this one to the board? <laughs> and, uh, and, and since we are, we're supposed to be paid to increase shareholder value, not decrease it, um, we did not take that to the board. And in hindsight, it was a mistake. And if we had, we now all realize that if we have, you know, rewinding the tape, and saying, gee, if only we, we could be back then, here's what we would do today, knowing what, or then what we would do. If we knew then what we had known then what we know today, here's what we would do. We would go to the board and say, we have a very unusual proposal for you. We're going to spend $400 million on a hybrid vehicle that's going to lose us $250 million a year, and we're going to explain to you why that's a good deal. Because if we don't do it, and Toyota does it and gets out ahead of us, it's going to cost us billions of dollars in sales and profit because we will have lost our image for technological innovation. And you know what, if we had put it that way, 
the board would have said, okay, makes makes sense, because we're now talking to the board about a lot of things. We're not sure we're going to, maybe years before we make a dime on this car, years. And the board said, hey, don't even talk about the profitability. General Motors needs this car. So, yeah, we made the mistake once, we'll, we won't make that mistake. is one question is this is probably in the future a little bit but I'm wondering are you guys considering a sort of performance version of the Volt like a Volt SS <laughs> uh, no that I, in the first place if our calculations are correct the Volt will be a performance car we're still Frank still looking at about seven seconds yeah so I mean seven seconds is good I am sure that there will be electronic tuning shops that will change the chip for you to where you will get less electric mileage, but somebody's going to figure out how to get this thing down to five seconds. But what's even better is I see, and I, I say this only partly jokingly, there are those among us who, with all our love for electric vehicles, but we like the sound of an internal combustion engine. And I see an accessory where you slip in a software disk. <laughs> no, and then on the screen, there appear all of these various uh, car sounds that you can pick. 12-cylinder Ferrari, uh, <laughs> racing Corvette, 427 AC Cobra, uh, even Harley Davidson motorcycle. Yeah, a <laughs> and then the, 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 uh, the computer will sense your throttle position and your speed and it'll give you exactly the appropriate piston engine sound. <laughs> and, um, and, it, and if you pick a Formula One program, you know, it'll give you your five downshifts as you're going toward the corner. That could be very exciting. It probably cause a lot of accidents. <laughs> Just one other quick question. Uh, um, on, are, are you guys considering the different body styles? Like, I, I fell in love with the, uh, the Kappa no, Nomad project and the wagon, the little wagon. And I... Well, let me, let me put it this way. Let us do this one, okay? And, um, and everything, everything is focused around this car. And as Frank will tell you, there's a lot of systems in this car, which if we were to start over again, we'd do them differently. That's going to be for generation two and generation three. But what we have to do now is stop the engineering, solve all the remaining problems, and get this into production as soon as possible. Then we will, then we will. And uh, this, I don't know if anybody mentioned it earlier, but this is, in a way, the equivalent of, in one way, the potentially the equivalent of the Model T. Why do I say that? Well, first of all, the Model T was a groundbreaking innovation. It was a game changer in automobiles. Secondly, it was the last American car that was exported massively to every country in the world. And that's what we're designing the whole for. Um, so um, this will be available in right-hand drive, left-hand drive. It meets the safety requirements of every, every known developed and undeveloped country. So as, as we gear up the production, I, I don't know how right now we're saying 60,000, maybe 100,000. I'm, I'm telling you, this thing could turn out to be half a million a year or more. And at that point, there's nothing to prevent us from looking at other body styles, doing sports roadsters, doing station wagons, doing minivans, uh, doing it in other brands, because um, I believe, the, the other thing I strongly believe is I think lithium ion batteries are gonna get better and better. And right now we're talking a range of uh, 40 miles at the end of battery life, maybe close to 50 miles in the, the first few years that you own it. But with the advances in lithium ion batteries, you know, someday the, the pure electric range is going to be 80 miles, 90 miles, 100 miles. And at that point, you ask yourself, why buy anything else? <laughs>